Good evening, Trinidad and Tobago. It is still the 11th of March. I was on radio this morning. So there was a live video this morning. I was wearing this exact same shirt. It's been a long day. Um, but we have an obligation to have these live videos at night for the people who do not get a chance to follow the show because our show, unfortunately, is at a very difficult time for some, even though we still, they say, one of the most watched, most listened to radio shows on radio now. Surprising. But because of the hours, um, the live video on evenings has become something important to a lot of people and they constantly message me are we getting a live video tonight it gives the members of the party uh an opportunity to talk to each other and um it's it remains the the pinnacle of what the progressive empowerment party was built around this live video and i don't want as we get bigger i don't want that this be sidelined because it's important to the members it's important to me and it keeps getting the message out all of our new members come via but most of our new members come via this format so yeah while we're sharing the live and waiting on others to join us maybe we could just like listen to a little music yeah our favorite song please share the video comment and tonight I will gladly open the posts if you ask questions I will answer them to the best of my ability any issues that you want touched on or addressed that can be touched on and addressed succinctly on a live video feel free to ask it in the thread and I will answer as much as possible later in the video let's get into the conversation somebody asked me today would it have made a difference if the people on the Titanic were aware of the iceberg and we get to use that analogy a lot don't we the Titanic analogy 
the, the, the looming crash, the sink, and the mass death that is the Titanic. We use that analogy a lot. Ian Griffith um, came up with, coined the term whining on a sinking ship to describe how we behave. We're abused by ignorance. We, we insist to not know, and if we know, we pretend we don't. And it's sad because we're responsible for our own undoing. The question remains, Philip's, Philip thoughts on motorsports and trying to make motorsports is big business. Is, is, we have a lot of people in Trinidad and Tobago interested in motorsports. We have actually um, operated at, the, at some of the highest standards in the world. And I think that we should have long ago um, created a space for motorsports to take place in Trinidad and Tobago. Granting of amnesty to Venezuelans. We said we're not too sure about the amnesty to Venezuelans. We don't think that Trinidad and Tobago, I certainly don't think Trinidad and Tobago could manage a fallout from Venezuela or a refugee crisis. And what I said was there were a lot of countries in the world that were offering to take Venezuelan refugees and Trinidad and Tobago being seven miles from Venezuela could have offered through Incedrus a landing point, a place for them to, to get to, to have, some, have a couple good meals, a change of clothes, get them organized, put a Canadian, United States, United Nations office down in Cedras to process them and get them to Piaco and forward on to their next destination. That Trinidad and Tobago could do. But already, already the influx of illegal immigrants and, and to all the people who trying to be very, um, how to say, they're trying to use the issue to score political points. The country's already drowning. It's like every time they talk about banning glass in carnival, the only real option is plastic if you ban glass. And plastic destroys the environment. So what are you going to do about carnival? Yeah, what do we think of amending the constitution to possibly have the upper, upper house include, have the upper house include, sorry, I'm not getting the whole, Facebook is giving me I didn't mm. yes now huh? I'm gonna try and see if I can find it on my computer. Elon, you had to give it to me shorter because I'm reading it on a telephone screen. What do we think of amending the constitution to possibly have the uppers include based on percentage of popular votes in representatives of smaller that song forced the two-party system to broker. That kind of sounds to me like um what do you call it? The when we have in um some of every people God, I have so much things that I'm dealing with at one time. That um, Timothy Hammersmith was champion, proportional representation. It sounds a lot like proportional representation. And what we need more than anything else is an educated population. Smaller parties, bigger parties. If you had campaign finance reform, there would be no such thing as smaller party and bigger parties. You would have campaign finance regulations that would insist that all members of parliament operating in election would be able to function under the same circumstances so that they would level the play field. We also speak about cancelling the 5,000... Oh God, I can't even read. I don't know which is the end now. Cancelling the $5,000 deposit um, for elections. How is PEP prepared to make community leaders buy into our values? those that live off government contracts. You're talking community leaders that are real community leaders or community leaders that are criminals because we're not negotiating with criminals of any hue. And if you're a criminal, you'll be brought to justice. All gang leaders, community leaders that are in criminal activity, white collar criminals. Progressive Empowerment Party wants to decriminalize marijuana to empty the jails of the 40,000 weed, weed cases to make space for the real criminals in society. So that is the answer to that. Um, how many people take part in carnival? I have no idea. I know it is dwindling. I know it's dwindling. Yeah, that was three fast questions off the top. Um, yeah, so, and on the issue of the Venezuela crisis, if you wanna talk about that, we should, we should manage the situation where we function as a go-between, discuss illegal poaching of wildlife, the Ministry of Agriculture has the second largest police force in the country of precepted arm-carrying officers. 
and they can't stop it you need to fire the minister fire everybody involved put a bounty on poachers and bring them all to justice as soon as you slap a fifty thousand dollar fine on somebody more sell the car the house and the boat to pay the bill and put them in jail everybody else is going to cool themselves well, nobody wants to go through that but we're not serious about it because we have government ministers throwing wild meat party and laughing at the public while they're pretending to to enforce the law i'm not a fool things too easy to fix in this country for it to be like this we can get all the wild meat we want imported by the pump from guyana massive massive wild meat trade why are we decimating our flora and fauna that could be used for a tourism industry yeah main issue in the country is the cost of living definitely that is a that is a big issue the main issue in the country is jobs as the main issue jobs three-day blackout of venezuelan ferry still coming what is there in place i have the cancer that candle and nothing government the cost of living jobs jobs is important we need to make sure that their jobs are plenty career opportunities we need to use our foreign affairs office our men our ambassadors and high commissioners based and the Progressive Empowerment Party says we do not need all the ambassadors and high commissioners we have, we need five. United Nations, the Americas, Europe, Asia, and I can't remember what was the fifth one, Africa. And those five um, high commissioners, ambassadors, would be able to deal with selling Trinidad to the world, Trinidad produce, Trinidad tourism, and sell and, and, and negotiate foreign direct investment into Trinidad and Tobago. We would make sweetheart deals for all. <laughs> Dominic Lopez, half of our wild meat swim here from Guyana and Venezuela. They have no difference. And you can't tell the difference between a Maliku from Trinidad and a Maliku from Venezuela. A lot of people change up with that nonsense. Seven miles. Um, yeah, what's talking about here? Yeah. Jobs, foreign direct investments. We make sweetheart deals with people willing to come and set up factories in Trinidad and Tobago on a 10-year bonded minimum that are labor-intensive businesses that would train our people in information, technology, and assembly and manufacture. What about our country's natural resources, maybe fuel, food, etc.? Agriculture is a number one pool for us. We will reopen Carony Limited. When we say we reopen Carony Limited, we don't grow sugar unless we grow in organic sugar. We want to open, we want to take back all of the lands that was Carony Limited and everything else that we can add to it. All the food bearing lands listed under Petrotrain right now and any other state agency, bring them under a super marketing company, um, facilitate small farmers. There are 7,000 farmers right now on a list that are looking for land to grow. Based on data consumption, we would make the land available to farmers and set a food agenda to bring down the price of food and save foreign exchange. We would also engage in mass growing of breadfruit, soursop, avocado, guava. Those are massive export markets and we could also look at pomsite, popo and mango whose fruits are used, whose flesh are used to make um, different, the different particles that they use in the confectionery industry. Yeah. Um, yeah, no more questions. So, how do you intend to reach undereducated full-time rural housewives? A lot of ways that you can do that, but I don't understand what you mean undereducated because rural housewives have been carrying this country for a long time. A lot of people don't know that. They don't have to be much more educated than they are. But the Progressive Empowerment Party always proposed to use our media. The government owns AVM and GISL, CNMG, that is now TTT, those things should have been a platform to promote education direct over the television airwaves to the public and not bullshit like to have, turn on TTT. Just go turn on TTT and see the bullshit people getting. TTT is just to eat a food. That's all it's for. Friends of the government. Look, you want a $50,000? Go and film some nonsense and we'll air it for you. But it could be used to teach to do homework supervision and you have channel 4 and you have 2018 so you could be doing language studies homework supervision so you could be teaching people tai chi and how to macrame education is king how is pep prepared to weed out certain governmental agencies that are literal persons that believe it's owed to them we're gonna purge and we're gonna make sure that that it's a meritocracy and a performance driven meritocracy at that if you can't produce vamos People graduate from UTT and can't get jobs. I have a friend with two doctors and can't find a job for three years now. 3.6 million degree holders in the States right now can't get jobs either. 
it's a difficult time and if you don't base your degree um, programs on the needs of the country you're gonna end up with that exactly that situation we need to get into food processing that is an important growth pool we need to we need food technology is important so the progressive empowerment party wants to diversify the country into tourism food and shipping so we want people degreed in shipping food processing and handling and tourism it's simply so so all the gate that you have all the gate that you want to offer all the free education that you want to offer offer it in those disciplines and give and let the people give back a three years a four years a five years depending on the amount of the cost cost of the cost to help rebuild the economy when i tell people in dubai 95 percent of dubai's money that you see glittering across the, the skyline that came from shipping port services that have nothing to do with oil and gas We've been made fools of, slaves, to go and dig oil in the ground. Leave that alone. Leave that alone. Anybody want to buy our oil, pay us a premium. But otherwise, we don't even need to use our own oil. We don't need our own gas. Imagine that. We could be operating this country on renewable, renewable energy. We could lower our carbon footprint to almost nil. We could have plastics. We can have plastics policies that makes every single use plastics repurpose, reuse, recycle to road building and construction. And we could use a policy that taxes manufacturers and importers of plastic bottles to pay scavengers to clean the nation and to pr provide them for construction and road building. What is your plan? How many evidence you have to persecute former alleged corrupted government leaders? Prosecute. Carlos, I think you made a typo or there was an autocorrect. And what is our plan? How many evidence you have? You and I have a lot of the same smoke that should prompt investigations to unearth fire. There is something called follow the money. Every time a check is written from central bank to the chancellor of the exchequer or whatever our version of that is to anybody, there must have been a paper trail to justify that payment of public funds. You just follow that backwards and backwork it. And where the paper doesn't exist, like in cases of Wasa where they burn down the office twice to hide corruption, we will employ the services of forensic accountants to trace and track down all the wrongdoers and bring them to justice. What is the PEP's plan to get more youths involved in sports and sport development? Hire people like Michael Phillips and Atto Boland. In fact, it is my dream that Atto Boland could be our Minister of Sport. And we could bring back Michael Phillips to head a version of Sport TT, not as a special purpose company, but as a dissemina dissemination of sport to the country. Michael Phillips have de has demonstrated through his cycling on the avenue and his family cycling initiative that he does every week that he's capable of planning and executing now let's extrapolate that on a national level Atto Bolden is creating some of the best performing athletes in the world but we also have men like Shaka Hislop and even Brian Chen Liang who could we have so many people in this country that are engaged in martial arts we could also bring martial arts as part of the thing people were talking earlier about um Auto sports. Why not have an entire council made up of all the sports? Will you join UNC? Under no circumstances will we join with any other political party. We say all the time, all the members of the UNC and PNM and COP and IOA, ILP and AOI and OIC and everybody else free to come and join the Progressive Empowerment Party. There are no restrictions. But we ain't joining with nobody under any circumstances explain pet plans for currently massage massive acreages dedicated to growing hardy crops breadfruit soursop avocado guava mango these crops don't require high maintenance they could provide seasonal labor for harvesting and the excellent export crops um, What's our policy to protect and promote the bee population? Toko has some of the best honey in the world, and our intention is through our food production ministry, which is going to be a super ministry. Our food production ministry is to work with all the bee farmers in the country and to get them hold, hosting symposiums, teaching other people's other people how to how to um whole um organize bee, um honey industry, education and healthcare. UE and the Cuba Children Hospital, what happened to these institutions? Well, unfortunately, things like Brandlara Stadium and the Cuba Hospital exist 
and the billions that were spent behind them already lost. And while we're going to pursue the people who lost us the money, they call Taruba the Brian Lara Cricket Academy, yet they're not teaching cricket in the Brian Lara Cricket Academy, but they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars a month to light it, to put Brian Lara name up in lights that helping nobody and accomplishing nothing. We will change and transform that into a real authentic cricket academy where children who want to learn cricket from all over the world could come and be educated there. The Cooper Hospital should be an authentic teaching hospital and I think that a joint venture with something like John Hopkins, Hopkins where we make the facilities available and they operate it. But but we need to go at a, we need to look at a total public health policy and it would be far more cost effective if we were to ensure all of our people with a medical card that guarantees you everything optom optometry dental full medical so that you never have to worry that once you have your card and you prepare present your card they have to serve you wherever you are we want to decentralize the 41 public health accident and emergencies 24 7 so that we will take the burden of the central hospitals we don't have to build anymore and we could use them we could use them as authentic teaching hospitals in joint ventures with other universities and teaching hospitals around the world what do you think about our president we don't need a president we should abolish the presidency and save that money and we can discuss that at length but when they ask you what will we replace it with the the, the functions of the president's office could be disseminated to speak with the president of the senate and the chief justice um how will we bring jobs and new investment back after the devastation caused by pnm policies tourism we plan to do tourism joint ventures we would provide the space for marinas for cruise ships that could do a three-person um, partnership, us private enterprise and the cruise owners, operators, so that the cruise ships would just provide the cruises and the passengers, private sector would build the marinas and we would provide the space. If we end up with 15 marinas capable of handling 15 cruise ships at a time, we could put a million feet on the ground in Tobago alone. A million feet per year, that would be the target. So that will, that's one. Agriculture is going to be a growth pole, a marine university, shipping and port services. We want to invite Singapore to work joint venture with us and help us establish a proper shipping organ, um, industry in Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah? What are the plans to deal with flood prone areas? Relocate people from flood prone areas. Flood prone areas exist for a reason and relocate communities out of flood prone areas and turn those communities into dams and lakes to hold water so we will never have a drought again. Do you think all our senators are corrupt as well? I can't answer that, but I can't answer that. Hey Phil, what is your position on full legalization of what was that? Full legalization of what? Please post that again. Full legalization of marijuana for full-scale commercial production. That's a tricky question. There are some issues with marijuana for private use. So we need to make sure that we're dealing with medicinal marijuana. First of all, decriminalizing and you must have a prescription. We have to start to manage from that. People need to understand tobacco sales and alcohol sales are not legal, you know. They are decriminalized. In fact, more than 1.8 liters of alcohol in your possession requires a license. And you could be arrested and charged by customs if you can't produce one and there's an actual book in every man importer and every manufacturer of alcohol and there's an actual version of that book in every grocer spirit grocers license special restaurant license that black sign you see um, licensed to operate as a wine retailer whatever they get a special book and when they buy alcohol to sell they get licenses and those licenses are um, represented as their stock customs and police come and make a notation in the book, tear up those licenses, and every time they sell alcohol above 1.8 liters, they're supposed to issue a license. And that's to explain to you that alcohol is not legal, it is decriminalized, and you have to manage marijuana the same way because they could be followed. And yes, the cannabis industry for the medicinal uh, marijuana industry globally is growing. California has the 13th largest economy in the world by itself built on marijuana called cultivation. Is there a medical benefit to implementing an agriculture program for Venezuelans in Trinidad similar to what's offered to Trinidad in Canada? Idris, we are too small to be talking like that. Venezuela about 50 million people. We can't be talking those things. Trinidad and Tobago could literally only function as a stopover point. 
You could come, have two square meals, change your clothes, bathe and dress, get on a plane. Yeah? What else? No more questions right now. Yeah, the Venezuelan issue. Don't think that we could absorb it. We can't. Just traffic. Just the stop and go of taxis and buses trying to move these extra people around will frustrate your life. These people are going to have needs that need to be met. They're going to need water. They're going to need jobs. They're going to need food. They're going to need to use public health. It can't deal with our existing population. How are you going to add more people to that rural preparation? The only thing that Trinidad and Tobago could functionally do here by being one of the closest nations to Venezuela is to provide United Nations, United States and Canada with offices in Cedros, create a, a pass-through center where people could literally be given a plate of food, processed and sent to Piaco Airport. How do we increase the value of money? Can US dollars be one-to-one? -one? As of this point, Daniel Alexander, nobody can explain to me why our dollar is 6.1 to the US dollar, nobody could explain to me because everything we have we export and nobody could explain to me why one seventh the, value, one -seventh the price, one fifteenth the purchasing power. That needs to be examined. I think the Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago have some questions to answer about the value of our currency. What are the plans to deal with corruption in the judicial system? Cedric Kimloas undo and redo we plan to start over the justice system as of today whatever that today is today every case prior to today becomes a cold case even if it happened yesterday but from today go forward all court cases will have a clock on it three years for civil matters five years for criminal matters that means the judge becomes a case manager and he is responsible he or she is responsible for completing the task of each case civil case under three years criminal case under five years if they fail to do that the case gets tossed and at the end of the law term all judges who are incapable of case management have to be re relocated to some other function in society the US is in debt Russia China Japan are moving away from it um, all myself said, said on news to 90 6 in Venezuela is to receive free health care I I can't talk to what these government ministers say, and there's a lot of politics and a lot of nonsense in what they are talking about. I, it's not based on fact. The media doesn't press them. The way you all press me, I said earlier, a lot of people hold me to a higher standard than they hold the government and the opposition. A lot of these questions you all ask me, you wouldn't ask them. And I don't mind. I think that this is how it should be. What about all those buildings that the government is renting? These are financing our political parties. I don't think the government should, should be renting as many buildings as they are renting. I believe it is a racket. I asked today on the radio. We have empty buildings in Port of Spain, yet we're renting one Alexandra place from Faris al Rawi and his family. A progressive empowerment party will terminate all. Terminate all of those leases. We will shrink down, decentralize, automate, telecommute, anything that we can. Because one of the biggest problems in Trinidad and Tobago is the 250,000 people that drive into Port of Spain to go to those offices every day to work needlessly. A lot of the work being done in those offices could be done remotely. It could be decentralized. We could build a smaller government campus in the center of the island to put it equidistant to everybody if you have to go to a government office. But things like renewing your driver's permit should be able to be done online paid with a credit card unless you absolutely need to be pre to present yourself and the licensing authority will tell you if you go to renew your permit online they will tell you there's a problem present yourself at the licenses authority um, will you open back our refinery Anderson Alexander I do not know if we really want to get back into that conversation at this point none of us have factual information you have a minister of energy and a chairman of Petrotrin that in three months gave us two totally um, contradicting statements in the first statement we were doing well Petrotrin was breaking even in the second Petrotrin was going to destroy the country and in quick time they shut the thing down so we don't have facts. There is a sealed report that none of us have had access to that we paid big money for. And all of this has to be addressed when you get into government and get the actual information. But right now, when you listen to what the media asks, when, people, when government ministers present information to the public, the media copies and pastes it without asking questions. I'll give you a case in point. When your Minister of National Security could say that there are places in Trinidad and Tobago that decent people shouldn't go, shouldn't he have listed those places so that we all know, especially the people who live in those communities? 
Um, will we allow 1% elites to continue building gates, etc.? Of course not. How do we stop this while protecting communities? Well, you see, it depends on what you're protecting communities from. If you're protecting Bayshore from traffic, there are ways to manage that. Because you could make Bayshore one way. You could make Bayshore one way and they wouldn't need a gate. From Regents Park, you'd have to go in through Goodwood Park entrance and come back out by the highway. That's a simple way to do it. All of a sudden, if you go the other way, you're breaking the law, you put an automated camera on the roundabout, you get your ticket in the mail, you spend your $3,000 for the shortcut. So that's a fast way to fix it. If we're trying to protect people from crime, the first thing we have to end in this country is poverty. We need to secure the nation's borders to end the drug and gun trade, and we need to create hope and opportunity for all of our people. 7,000 people fail out of our education system every year with nowhere to go but hustle and crime. All of that needs to be addressed. The Ministry of Social Development and Management under Progressive Empowerment Party would be a super ministry and the ministries of education and national security will come under that so that you would have a seamless integration of a plan that repurposes all of our people especially and I would like to mention names like Gregory Sloan Seal of people that you bring in and we do social massive social interventions in Morvan, Beatham, Lavendel, Sealots, Kokori, Big Yard, Scorpion, Abipujad, even M back of their enterprise places where the people are failing that we call at risk and dispossessed let's make let's remake those communities into functional places would you be able to open the sugar factory i don't think so but we'll be able to open food processing in this country and food processing is a massive growth industry worldwide Trinidad tobago has the second hottest pepper in the world the maruga scorpion pepper 99 percent of it is used for pepper spray Trinidad tobago could be cornering the pepper spray market in the world every three months 600 million canisters of pepper spray um they need to change because it goes bad quick time so we're supposed to be contributing to the export of that pepper spray alone honey cocoa Trinidad cocoa is the finest cocoa in the world and we're supposed to treat it with the respect it was supposed to be getting a hundred years now so let's just treat Trinidad cocoa with that respect wrap it in velvet and ship it to the world but there are other things that we could be growing if Mexican um, dwarf avocados is a 1.5 billion US dollar industry to the United States why can't our Pollock butter avocado be an equal industry. The whole world is learning that breadfruit is the only low glycemic starch. It could function as sweet potato, it could function as white potato, it could function as wheat flour. Why aren't we planting a million breadfruit trees? Soursop is a natural cancer fighter, they call it nature's chemo. Why aren't we planting a million soursop trees? Popo is used in food processing for confectionery. Why aren't we planting millions of popo trees? Julie mango sought after worldwide's best mango in the world. Why we not? And all of those crops are hardy crops. The guava that we grew up eating has five times the vitamin C of an orange. Trinidad and Tobago should be dealing with crops like that. And a guava tree is so hard that after you cut it down, you had to burn the stump. Yeah? What else? That's. Yeah? jailers could plant 100 acres of scorpion pepper. We actually want to turn our jails into universities. We want the people who go to jail to come out of jail better than they went in. And that you could get time off your sentence for degrees. You could get time off your sentence if you learn to read, if you were illiterate, you get time off your sentence. If you get an associate degree, you get time off your sentence. You get a bachelor's degree, you get time off your sentence. You get a master's degree, you get time off your sentence. You get a doctorate, we open the gate. Somebody who went to jail, unless you went to jail for murder or rape or, or treason, somebody who went to jail because they had no real choice, that is now a doctor. You think that that is the same person? You send that new doctor back into the community they came from as a positive ripple into society. Yeah? Why isn't all this being done or was not done under the former administration? Carlos Donawa, I believe both of these administrations are operated by a brutal 1% only concerned with making money and they don't want things fixed. They want things continuously dependent on them being able to build the state for maintenance and repair. 
What about Nelson Island? I mean, all of these things could be used in the tourism industry. We want to make Trinidad and Tobago a tourism hub. We are the only tropical island outside of the hurricane belt. Trinidad and Tobago is supposed to be the marina to the world. All the rich and the famous Bill Gates and Steve Jobs and, 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 and all these singers and all these actors, their, their yachts should be parked up in Trinidad. We should have massive marinas all around this country just for that. Macarip, Shagaramas, Sheltered Bays, look at Maracas Beach. When you see Maracas Beach from overhead and you realize what a natural wonder of the world Maracas Beach is, I don't understand why we have it operated so badly. Yeah? Food trees are so hard to find right now. If you have an estate plant, you can afford to spend up to $100 for trees. Yes, but fruit trees are self-propagating. Um, so a lot of fruit trees make their own seedlings. Yeah? Why are we having tours of the Magnificent Seven? Yet they are staying there rotting away among our other historic sites. The traffic situation around the Queen's Park Savannah makes no sense. And I honestly think that the Magnificent Seven should have been turned into a museum district. We should have made that a promenade. All those side streets between them should be closed where the Magnificent Seven is concerned. You don't need those side streets. And you could have that as bars and, and jazz clubs between them. You could use them, you could rent them, lease them out, operate them. Then the Savannah will become functional again day and night and you could use it as part of the tourist industry. How about giving the smaller contractors work instead of the big boys? Our policy is that all construction, all public works must be done in the constituency by companies registered in the constituency. Under Progressive Empowerment Party, there won't be a need for the Calcos and the Junior Samis and the and, and, and the Kusals to come and do work in all 41 constituencies. If you're building something in Digo Martin West, Digo Martin West contractors should be building it. Digo Martin workers should be employed there. Um, our pitch deck is a treasure, absolutely. Yeah, these are all policies that the Progressive Empowerment Party. We've been saying this for a long time that the work in the constituency should be done by people from the constituency. I never thought it never made sense, but our vision to replace local government with uh, and, and and the RHAs and the police service with a constituency board of supervisors, where each constituency would have five supervisors, public works, public utilities, education, healthcare, and security, all responsible for the maintenance and upkeep and management of the constituency. Those five critical issues are things that go to make up your life. Public utilities responsible for water and electricity, public works responsible for the condition of everything else in the community, education, healthcare, and security. Once they are taking care of those things, you, can, you are free to go about your own life. Can you speak to our immigration standards? Can this polar? You need to ask a better question than that. I don't understand what you're trying to say. Um, I live in Miami, don't visit Trinidad much, but the last time I was there in 2014, there were gardens to grow food now as buildings, what a shame. How will you change the constitution and give power to the larger population? The things that need to be changed in the constitution aren't that many. So when you hear people saying constitutional amendment, you need constitutional reform. You have to ask them what exactly that you mean. In the United States of America, women have vote because of an amendment to the Constitution. Black people were freed as slaves, an amendment to the Constitution. Black people were given civil rights, an amendment to the Constitution. Um, the, the actual Bill of Rights in the United States of America is an amendment to the Constitution. The Miranda, you have a right to remain silent. All of that. If you want... If you want to deal with our constitution, you could amend the things that need amending. One of the things that need amending is the right of recall. We hire, we hire members of parliament through an election process, and we have no way to remove them if they're not performing. Recall legislation is critical to the operation of this country. From the moment the average citizen has the power to trigger a petition to fire a member of parliament. Take, for example, Fuad Khan. If Fuad Khan was a member of parliament, now his his people, the people who voted for him, could have been shamed into action to fire him over his nasty um, body shaming insults to, to Candace Santana. Other things that need to be done where our constitution amendments are concerned, campaign finance management. You need to set an amount. Right now, this is actually the law and nobody enforces it. All you need to do is enforce that law. That if you break the law of, of campaigning, you will forfeit your candidacy and nobody will play the fool with that. There are other issues, of course, we need to embed human rights as a, as a a Bill of Rights, we want an environmental Bill of Rights. We want an animal Bill of Rights that would protect domestic, farm, and wild animals from neglect and
and abuse, the Environmental Bill of Rights would, would start with a 50% green space. All construction going forward from now must accommodate for a 50% green space. And if your building is taking up more than 50% of the floor space, you have to prepare to put a green roof and contribute to the atmosphere there. Utilities, Philip, water, power, etc. Decentralize them. Decentralize them. We could be generating or we could be harnessing the water. Rain falls in Diego Martin and tell people nine months out of the year. Rain fell in Diego Martin today. We have enough rainfall in this country to provide water to everybody in this country. We just don't manage it properly. We built a, a country around taking the bounty of rain through concrete drains and dumping them in the sea. Those same concrete drains all along the way you could build 50,000 gallon holding ponds all along the way and using the same hydraulic release mechanisms that the Romans developed 2,000 years ago send all those water to a central dam as, as it needs. We could have hold, process, treat, distribute water 24-7 and end the nonsense of the tanks, the water pumps and the water trucks. How will you change the constitution to give the yeah, that's that. Making CNG more available for motorists. Today we found out that a lot of countries go into full electric vehicles and that they have countries that in 20 years will not be allowing vehicles with emissions of any kind. So CNG is not going to be a way forward. What we need to do is jump the queue and get into the electric vehicle and set a timeline. So we tell ourselves that by the next 10 years, there will be no diesel gas vehicles in China. Stop the imports. Views on having a fingerprint and facial database for every citizen in this country to aid in the fight against crime. Warren Dante, you'll find that I am a human rights, civil liberties um, person and I do not agree with that. I think that there are better ways to fight crime and we don't need that. And I understand how you might feel now in a country that looks like crime is winning. But crime won't win in a nation where the government really wants crime to end. The first thing you need is to clean up the police service through an internal affairs division. If you have an internal affairs division that deals with the issues in, if you have in, deal with the internal affairs of the police service and clean it up, you will find that we will no longer have as much crime as we have right now. The police service is responsible in no small part for a lot of the crime that takes place in Trinidad and Tobago. When are you coming to Miami for a pep meeting? Um, I actually been told by the management team that they're setting a schedule and a tour um, for New York, Canada, Florida, and I think that has to happen sometime this year because that's where we have our biggest teams. So that's, that's on the cards. Yeah? What about homeless citizens, especially on the streets? I wrote I wrote and presented to Kamla Pasad Bisesa in 2010 something called the Second Chance Foundation whose mission it was to reclaim all of the homeless people and identify why they were homeless. Generally, there are three reasons why people are homeless. Mental illness, drug addiction, drug or substance addiction, and people who have literally just fallen through the cracks of society. Mental illness needs to be treated with a lot more dignity and respect than we do right now in this country and that needs to be addressed. So is drug and substance um, addictions. But for the people who just fall through the cracks of society, we need to identify why and we need to help them get back on their feet. But that way you take the people, the homeless people off the streets and give even them hope and opportunity. One of the things we plan is the plastics um, industry will give a lot of the people who prefer to live a freer lifestyle and give them an opportunity to earn money while doing it. Yeah? There was something else just asked that I wanted to answer when that was asked. Sorry about that. Foreign exchange, well, I mean, heavy fines for those who burn tires, etc. The environment is very important. Rose Fung Chung, how about we pay people for their tires? Because used tires could be used in a lot of things. Gym, gymnasium mats, that's a growth industry. All of those, um, you could use it in construction, you could use it in road building, you could use it in creating um, safety apparatus for transportation. 
we could buy okay can this is asking over question immigration with regards to non-national entry migrant work etc into Trinidad and Tobago I think we, we we need to target full employment in Trinidad and Tobago first we need more jobs than people and I don't mean making sandwiches in Subway and twirling a matter of amalgamated security. I mean real jobs that you could grow into a career, that you could plan a life on, that you know that every couple of years you could advance your knowledge base and based on experience and, and new knowledge, you could move up the line. I prefer that we get all of our people in Trinidad and Tobago fully gained, fully employed before we look at trying to save the world. Use tires for soil erosion mitigation, exactly channel now. We have an advisory council, Chalana Birchwood is a member of. In fact, it is my dream to get the advisory council to Trinidad for a symposium and have an open mic session for as long as it takes for people to come and ask as many questions as possible because they'll realize how hard we've been working at problem solving. Yeah, Candice Paula, I hope I I hope I answered your question. Yeah. Um, but the environment is very important, Rose Fong Chong. Um, you all have any plans regarding National Insurance Board because something needs to be done with that place? Absolutely. As we said, we're going to end the um, repurpose National Insurance Property Development Company. needs to be shut down like every other special purpose company. All of the properties that are vested in NIPDEC need to be repurposed to use or sold. The National Insurance Board right now doesn't provide the service that people think it does. And a proper insurance um, plan for all the people of Trinidad and Tobago, non a contributory plan. If you earn less than $50,000 a year, you should get your card free of charge. And if you earn more than $50,000 a year, you pay a certain amount, more than $100,000 a year, you pay a certain amount, more than $250,000 a year, you pay for your full insurance. Because at the end of the at the end of the day, we want to make sure that all of our people, but public health would also be assisted if you have if we start focusing on the sins of society, for want of a better word, type 2 diabetes and, and heart disease ravish in this country because of diet. And this is what Fuad Khan wanted to say and missed the opportunity to say. Type 2 diabetes, but you have to deal with issues like movie town. Now, you're going to say that it's capitalism and it's free enterprise. Yes, but there's fallout to capitalism and free enterprise and that's where government comes in. That's where managing the country comes in. And I would tell Derek Chin of movie town that 20% of the food that you offer in your concessions should be healthy food. Right now, it's only junk. Right now, it's only junk. Sell some apples, sell some pears, sell some bananas, make some salads available for the people who want to eat healthy. I do not understand why a big gulp soft drink is cheaper than a, a bottle of water. Yeah? Will you close down CPEP under a progressive empowerment party government? There will be no need for CPEP. There will be no need for URP. We're going to repurpose all of our people to functionality and put them on career paths so that they have hope and opportunity and don't need to turn back or look back. Preventative care absolutely will increase access to good health care. Absolutely. Education using the state media would help people understand what exactly preventative health care is. We would like to use the schools on afternoons when they close and have people, retirees, teach Tai Chi, teach martial arts, teach dance, movement, keeping everybody active. It shouldn't be that at the end of the day, the only thing that you could find to do is go by a bar and drink and gamble. We're supposed to be able to offer our people opportunities so that they can develop. That sadly is not the condition now, but it's a quick change to make. Any plans for CGA? It depends on what CGA is doing now. And to be honest, I don't know. I am not aware if it is profitable, if the initial function it was set up for is still um, applicable. Um, biology should be taught, absolutely. Our education system needs to be rebooted. Um, we have to fix our diet, absolutely. Yeah, these things are critical. You all are touching on all of the important issues. So that means you all know. Children and Tobago are aware. You all know. You all are functionally aware of the issues that need to be addressed. Yeah, let's take a short break.
Shagaramas should be made a green space. Shagaramas should be declared a national park. There should be spaces in Shagaramas that you can't drive to, but nature trails, running, and, and, and family activities, picnics. Shagaramas should be reserved for that. Um, any plans for hotels? We need plenty more hotels. We need to make sure that our room stock is high, and we need to engage in, in um, Airbnb and other ways to get our people involved in that industry so that they too could grow into the industry and help our people get self-sufficient. Yeah? Shagaramas Causeway, um, I think we need to look at the environmental impacts of the Causeway Akil Camps. There, there is a road into Shagaramas right now, I think it's either in Coveen or Rich Plain, that you just need to connect to the Tucker um, Valley Road, so you need to, and, and there are other ways to get into Shagaramas that you don't need behind garage, that you don't need to um, build a causeway. The environmental impact and the cost of a causeway is a waste of time and a waste of money in my humble view. And I think that if you turn Shagaramas into a green space, a nature reserve, and you use things like water taxis to, and ferries to get people there, um, land ferries, water ferries, cable cars, we have to look at those options. Yeah, Provide a proper transportation system. Yes, Hayden Phillips, you're correct. Plan for 100 billion debt in budget. Rishi Singh, let me tell you something. Eh? A lot of the problems that we have in Trinidad and Tobago has to do with theft, and we are going to pursue the people who stole our public funds under whatever disguise they stole it, cost overruns, contracts. We're coming at you for our money, every single one of you. No matter how big you think you are now, I, Philip Edward Alexander, pledge to you tonight with every breath in my body, if you abused public office or access the public office for your criminal self-enrichment, we are going to come after you. Bars should not be open until 11 a.m. It depends on where the bars are. Bars in a three-mile um, radius of a residential area should shut down at midnight, so last call at 11. Um, but bars outside of residential areas can get um, special restaurant license and open whenever. That will be up to them. But in a proper repurposed functional country, people want to, wouldn't want to be out drunk all night because they'll have hope and opportunity. Drug abuse and drug addiction and alcoholism exist in countries where people lack hope, you know. It is a way of managing frustration. People are hiding from their lives. We could fix that. We could fix everything. And, and none of it is rocket science. And none of it is stuff that we're making up. There was a saying that I see all the time, success leaves clues. If Singapore is number, Singapore and Dubai number one in the world for shipping and port services, go there. If Finland is number one in the world for education, go there. Go to all places, go to New Orleans, go to Atlanta, find out how their food industry operates their city, Tabasco and, and, and Mars and, and Hershey's and in Pennsylvania, go to, and Coca-Cola in Atlanta, go and find out how these industries operate within the community and generate employment and create community-based um, industries. What about all the housing projects which have all been de deliberately left? We said an all. The Progressive Empowerment Party is going to shut down the HDC. We're going to shut it down. Our plan is to provide zero deposit, zero interest for up to 30 years on housing for all our citizens. Anybody who is living inside an HDC house, when we take government, we will give them the opportunity to buy it. If they're leasing it from somebody else that is against the law, we will terminate the lease and do an agreement with them, the occupant of the house, so that they could purchase all unfinished HDC project will be finished and put on the market and sold and we will create an opportunity zero deposit zero interest for 30 years up to 1.5 million dollars for first-time homeowners so that even minimum wage earners could own a home yes Lisa counseling in community centers for depressed people but but depression anxiety bipolar and a lot of these mental illnesses are happening and growing because we've broken the community we've broken the family people need 20 hugs a day you all know that 
You'll know that you actually need intimacy. When you look at um, National Geographic and you see monkeys grooming each other and lions licking each other, it's because animals need other, and social animals need interaction with other animals for them to feel good. We've isolated ourselves. We've turned ourselves into silos. We need to get back to the community and undo the posture and the posing and the stunting and, and, and bring back Trinidad and Tobago, back to a real community. The message of the Progressive Empowerment Party is if we fix the communities, we'll fix the country because our country is a collection of communities. They seem to sabotage the radio show this morning as soon as we started to talk about Stuart. Yes, they cut us off. Yeah? Um, and Jeffrey, it's a lot of people working on all of this. It's not just me. I'm a spokesperson. I do all the talking. Uh-huh. Lisa, go and look it up and come back and tell me. Seedbox man say he could be a lion. He likes to lick people. That's between you and your friends, my friend. Yeah. People run out of questions to ask. Let's talk about culture. Let's talk about music. Let's talk about dance. Let's talk about art. Let's talk about bringing that back into society, bring that back into the community. Let's find the people who are predisposed to arts and writing and music and give them hope and opportunity too. Let us get back to a place where the you don't have to force yourself to be something that you're not. You could live in a country where you could maximize your potential, where you don't have to be the biggest fool on the, on the biggest house, on the highest hill to be happy. We live like that now. I watch these people, I move in these circles, go to Park, St. Clair and Fairways. They're living in the biggest house, they're driving the biggest cars, and they're miserable. They have no relationships. They're frustrated. Anthony Sabga dead working. Dead working. Carlos Sabga dead working. These people, a lot of these people who you see so successful, I mean, a dollar above need is greed. And when you reach as far as these people, Derek Chin get one functional movie term. He get two, he need five, he need ten. How much is enough before you're dead and cockroach eat your eyeballs? How many girls pinching your bottom you need to feel, ah, oh, God, are nice. How much? At some point, stop. At some point, stop. Because as you profiteer, you think I'm providing jobs, but you're not. Because as you scale, you're providing a harder and harder life for your employees. Stop. You build trees, cineplex, relax. You and your two children enjoy the, 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 the proceeds and let somebody else's family get a chance too. Why you must eat all? I don't understand that. And that's why I said, Caribbean stag shouldn't be the only bears in the country. Open the economy, help people set up and import and manufacture other bears in the country. Make it so that we expand, so that everybody has a chance. There shouldn't only be one match factory, there should be 20. It should be possible for everybody who wants to open a radio station to get a chance. The internet is the greatest equalizer. We're still trying to hold light in a bottle and pretend that we can control it. They're happening. Yeah? Steel pan. Steel pan in school. The harmonium, the sitar. Teach them in school. Little children up to the age of five. You should be teaching them multiples of languages and teach them Give, give them access to, to, to art and give them access to music and let them find themselves because that is the future. That is their future. We need brass bands back on the road for carnival. I couldn't agree with you more. The amplification of sound in the residential areas, that need to be tempered down. That need to be tempered down. Carnival has become excess. Excess, the biggest, the loudest, the widest, the strongest. What the hell is that? What happened to the cultural expression of a free up of our people? Legalize marijuana and create jobs. There are some steps between there, the decriminalization of marijuana, yes, as farm jobs. Um, all communities should participate in different cultures and religious holidays and events. Kerwin, Perillion, I couldn't agree with you more. And we would like to replace a lot of these segregational holidays with a Trinidad long weekend. Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago Day. Or Trinidad and Tobago two days. You celebrate where you come from and then everybody share. Because this segregation thing, not working for us. Not working for us. You have, I have no connection to the Syria that my grandfather come from. I have no connection to the Venezuela my maternal grandfather come from. I have no connection to them. 
a Capricorn, a, Syri a Syrian, a Portuguese, a Venezuelan, I even have African blood. I have no connection to those things. All I am is a Trinidadian. Why can't that be good enough for me? Syria is a place. Africa is a place. These things are not races. How to help people with obesity to help themselves? Lifestyle, really. There are some actual medical conditions, thyroid conditions and other conditions that actually trigger obesity and and Ford can as a doctor and he should have addressed that you, you you can't blame somebody without knowing what their condition is but trinidad's lifestyle we have coca-cola pepsi cola sn jaleel solo and all of these people selling sugar juice five and six tablespoons of sugar we have sn we have um lock jack with his charles chocolate and his universal cereals that printing on the box this vitamin and that protein and it's all bullshit because it's a sugar shock to the system we sell sugar and flour in this country and processed flour without any value national flour mills is the biggest culprit of all yeah what else We need, we need lifestyle changes. We need to make it possible. People not safe, people don't feel safe to jump on a bicycle. And imagine if you started to empower offices and give them tax rebates if they provided lockers and showers in the facilities in buildings. Let's say you pick BP building in town and you tell BP, if you provide showers and lockers for the people so they could run to work or they could ride to work so that people could come to work as they work out, riding, running, walking, lower our carbon footprint, they get exercise, they get to work, they bathe and they dress for the day. Yeah? Things like that. Do there are things like that. We need to actually put taxes on Burger King and KFC. They can't come here and undersell, and we need to subsidize Creole food. We need to subsidize healthy food. Rather than spend $5 billion a year on public health, trying to solve the problem after the fact, how about we encourage our farmers and we, and we motivate our farmers and we subsidize local Trinidad food because a lot of our food is good healthy food it make Atto Bowl and not Atto Bowl and Usain Bolt the fastest man in the world for a decade mm -hmm. my video is horizontally backwards yes it's the front camera I apologize for that no tax on bananas well all right no problem at all but Banana Republic actually came from the banana industry, which is one of the most corrupt industries in the world. Eh? Um, people following the food pyramid are still getting obese, absolutely. Listen, all you need to do is educate the public. The closer to the tree, the better for me. But it should be cheaper. If the price of a salad in McDonald's is more expensive than a burger and fries, what do you think the people are going to choose? At least level the play field so healthy food could have a shot now. At least level the play field. Huh? And, um, yeah. How long have we been on tonight? It feels like a lot of time has passed. Are we here more than an hour already? So, Aidan, thanks a lot for this. And it actually dovetailed well with the name of the show because the name of the show is abused by ignorance and we kind of disabuse a lot of the ignorance tonight. Um, Kamal Luchan say, I go choose doubles. Yeah, but what would a whole wee doubles? Nah, just joking about now. Anything in excess is good for nothing. People should be allowed to have they're poison. I mean, when you go to a bar and they tell you choose your poison, they're not joking. That's what alcohol is. If you didn't know, it is. And you could actually die from alcohol poisoning if you take too much alcohol into your system. But a little bit, it will kill you. So it's not like we're saying ban this and ban that. We're just saying give people the choice to choose a better life. But if we engage in food production, the way we want to engage in food production, the cost of Trinidad food will come down. Yeah? 
What's the plan to control the outrageous price of the average vehicle on the road? Well, Arnold Jaglal, we have a car culture. People express themselves by their car, the car that they drive. And um, so we need to address that issue. And that is a whole conversation we need to have with the road system and the transport system because a lot of people like myself, when Uber came to Trinidad, and I used Uber twice, I was at that time selling my vehicle. I got a sale for my vehicle and I thought, I'm not gonna buy another vehicle for a while, I'm just gonna Uber around because it was functional. And it served me well. When they cancel Uber, I had to go and buy a vehicle. I think, I think that we need more of that. We need, we need, we need to bring back Uber. And we need to make sure that we have safe, trans, safe, affordable transportation options. You're supposed to be able to move from San Grande to Chagaramas and from Puerto Spain to at least San Fernando on the hour, every hour. You're supposed to be able to provide public transportation to that. And if you can't, you need to fire yourself. Yeah? And... Uh, it have whole wheat dal pre. Yes, come on, I know they have whole wheat dal pre. But I want to tell you, I ate a gluten free waffle the other day and it was like eating chipboard. Sometimes if you're going to sin, sin all the way, brother. And my cheat day will always be a roti. Yeah? Encourage more companies to give a lifestyle. Um, yeah, gyms in the office, absolutely give them a tax break for that. We should help finance the creations of more fitness institutions more dance clubs more gyms people should be able four o'clock in the morning to go and take a dance class you can imagine Trinidad and Tobago if you could access healthy lifestyle the way we access drinking drunken alcohol imagine if you could say that we finish work midnight and you know you have a music class or a piano class or a dance class imagine if you could have access I own a guitar and a piano, and I, it is my life's plan to get proficient in both. And it is so difficult because it's t trying to fit. But you can imagine if I could go down on the promenade tonight with my guitar and bounce up other people with their guitars, and we could be jamming. But nobody want that right now because Trinidad and Tobago is a frightening place because it's mismanaged. But you imagine the same Brian Lara promenade from Hyatt all the way to the Cipriani statue. You can imagine if both sides brightly lit that we rented space to food trucks all along the outside on both sides and provided bathroom facilities, security guards, cleaners, picking up and cleaning and wiping down like if you're in a restaurant and provided a nice safe space for families, little stages all along the way for people to book and perform. Imagine if you bring that back into Port of Spain at night. Imagine that as something for families to do. Imagine that. How far can I reach politically? I could become the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago if the people of Trinidad and Tobago want a better country. That is as far as I could reach politically, or I could fail. Trinidadians could let themselves down and they could choose mediocrity again. And I am open to either reality and I am very clear in my mind that either or could take place. But I tell people this all the time. If it is God's plan that I become Prime Minister, nobody could stop it. And if it is not God's plan, nothing I could do could make it a reality. So I am free in my mind. All I am doing is my job to inform, educate, and empower, and let the people decide from there. Crime and gym for in the morning, no way. Guns, drugs need to be cleaned up before anything. Ryan, I realize you just came on the live. After the show, reboot, watch it from the start, you realize we touched on the issue of managing crime through the eradication of poverty, cleaning up the police service, securing the nation's borders, giving the people hope and opportunity. Regulate big companies that donate a one to five percent of their profits to non-profit organization. Kerwin, that's a very close idea to what we actually want to do. We want community. We want companies operating within the community. There must be a community contribution to the development and maintenance of the community in which the company operates. You can imagine if Case Kiss Making Company had to do, contribute five percent of their gross to Shabonas, to Gaston Street. You can imagine how beautiful Gaston Street would be looking. They should, all companies should be made to donate. And imagine what that would do 
to places like Lavantil and Barataria. If you had that as a plan, that communities have to donate 5% to the development of the community. So you'd have a community council who would be responsible for these funds, who would look for ways and means to spend these funds to develop the community in the best interest of everybody. Then the, the company wouldn't have a security budget because nobody ain't breaking in that company. They will defend it with their lives. Yeah. We need more technical and trade schools. Absolutely. Absolutely, but in our vision for Trinidad and Tobago, we want to rebuild 200 schools for the 200,000 children that go to school in Trinidad and Tobago. And all of these schools should be able to offer basic grade one trades in all of those trades that you could then graduate from to a higher institute of learning if you want to go forward in any of the technical trades. Well, then electrical, plumbing, masonry, carpentry, joinery, all of those trades, yeah? Contractors with truck and back would do to the roadway, what can be done, they make a mess. Um, hmm. I think you could, I guess you could policy that and you could tell them, because I know on job sites that we have, when the cement truck finished, is washed down the cement truck right there before they drive down the road because they don't want the cement to get hard. So if they could do it, I guess you could policy it that anybody could. Hmm? Let's, let's, let's get people opening back little boxing gym and karate gym and, 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 and weight training gym and aerobics. But imagine if it's like you help and they help to give back to community. So 24 hours a day, the community centers. We build in community centers for people to go and drink rum and play all fours. Drinking rum and playing all fours is cool. But why are we not using the community centers to develop the people? Yeah? The contractors should have roads. People as well. I mean, we said a simple, a simple case as downtown Port of Spain, two o'clock every morning. You should have street sweepers with hundred degree boiling water washing down all of Port of Spain, so that by the next morning the sunrise is pristine again, no urine and feces and rubbish. Because we, we could go like that. There are plans that could fix anything. There, are, there, there's, there are policies that could fix anything. Nothing in this tiny dot of a country is irredeemable. We could fix everything. You and I, it's not just me. You could do it. There are, pe there are people in this country a lot brighter than me. Motivate them and they will do it. We need a better country. We overdue for this. Look at the Maracas Beach car park. Now I ask them, they've spent money on this three times in my lifetime. Massive money. And every time they've spent money, not one of the jackasses responsible for the car park thought to pass the road on the outside of the car park so that parents and children and the disabled don't have to run across the road between the car park and the beach. Come on! It's already paved. Just shift it. You don't have you don't need a backhoe. You need some paint. You need some paint. Incorporate the road into the car park and take off the back end of the car park and make that the road. Oh Christ. How difficult is that? Something as simple and counterintuitive as that, we can do. Hmm. After Carnival, downtown Port of Spain was dirty and smelled disgusting, still does, yes. And I mean, instead of us funding Carnival, Carnival should be paying its way. But we can't have that conversation because we live in a country where Carnival is used as a cultural division where they compare carnival to chut calypso to chutney and carnival to, to diwali and everything is a bacchanal everything is a division in Trinidad and Tobago instead of, a, instead of being something to unite the country we use everything to divide the country to the benefit the financial benefit of stakeholders and I have to stop the benefit must be to the people all leaders usually sound really great and promising before just like you are sounding now very convincing but when they get in power they fail what will make you any different kenroy ambrose most mostly because i am driven to do this and i am very sexy no just kidding but every you you, you have no they, nobody can blame you for being jaded nobody could at all i could be the biggest charlatan in history as well as i could be i could live up to everything that I am telling you now. I want to tell you this though. I have a complete disaffection for the 1% and the contract mafia. I have a complete dislike 
for people who abuse. There's a part of my brain called the norm of reciprocity that is focused on injustice and I hate it. I hate the fact that a small handful of people have been allowed to destroy this country to their own criminal enrichment. And I want to level the play field for people so that everybody could benefit. That is my purpose right now with my life. And I prepare to give five years, one term, to put a lot of this in place and let others take it from there. So you, at the end of the day, you have to be a judge of character. The people, the places you go to line, the, the people you work with, the whoever you're dating, all of that, you're judging character. Judge me. Look at the amount of effort that I have put in. In the last two years, I have been at more public meetings than Kamala and Pandey and then government, then, then of politics 30 years, 40 years. We have a meeting every week. I do this every day. I was on the radio for three hours this morning. I on this live video with you now. This is a commitment for me to a better country. And I know what I said. That if the people choose it, we will do it. And if they don't, we will live with it. And everybody will have to make their choices after that. Somebody told me in Gulfview over the weekend, this one and that one and this one say, if, Manny, if Pat Rowley or Kamala come back to power after the next election, this one selling their business and that one selling their house. I said, Pam, who buying it? Everybody looking to fly out. Every, if, you, if we don't rescue Trinidad and Tobago from Faris al Rawi and Rudal Munilal, it's dead. If we don't rescue Trinidad and Tobago from Colm Imbud and Suru Drambachan, it's dead. If we don't rescue Trinidad and Tobago from Terence Dial Singh and Fuad Khan, it's dead. If we don't rescue Trinidad and Tobago from Anthony Garcia and Tim Gopi Singh, it's dead. These people failed us. Gary Griffith was able to say today in the papers, the four commissioners of police before him failed at their jobs. When he was appointed, he could have been a charlatan or a performer. You had to base it based on the man's track record and the same you have to do with me because I've never held public office, but I've been instrumental in two acts becoming law and I've solved the Diego Martin um, highway problem. The um, traffic problem, the entering Diego Martin, the evening traffic. I was the person who came up with the Diego Martin bypass. And I saw it through. I helped get it done. I wasn't paid a single cent for it. I, I, I am the founder of the Jericho Project that deals with the homeless, the orphans, the disabled. I've been in this a long time. I've had over a million words published. I've been doing this for a long time. And I have avoided getting entrenched with either of the corrupt political parties at my own expense, by my own choice. Because I want a better country. I don't want a post and opposition. How do we rehabilitate our atrocious international image after rolling the PM antics with Maduro, the IS, ISIS recruited, and our reputation for corruption? By opening the windows, pulling back the drapes, inviting the international communities, setting up something called the Activist Council, by setting some benchmarks and stake, uh, standards for Trinidad, higher than global standards, that saying that we commit to being a member of the, of the global family and to do everything in our power to eradicate Trinidad and Tobago's reputation of being a drug trafficking nation and involved in any way in the gang culture. We would work with international um, partners to come into our country and scorch the earth where the gangs and the ISIS and all the extremist bullshit exist. We plan to remove the guns from the country, shut down the nation's borders to stop the illegal guns. Imagine if you stop the flow of illegal guns into China and you tell police officers you're getting $2,000 for every gun. How much gun do you think we're getting? Melt them down. Every gun that you melt down, you could label it and stick it on a wall and show them, look around, there's 30,000 guns behind me. Cost us $60 million. They have no more guns in society. Let them use slingshot to commit crime. The world will see. Give CNN office. Give Fox, MSNBC, Times, the, the Washington Post. Let them come to Trinidad and see. Make ourselves transparent. Make ourselves globally open, engaged in policies and politics of the highest standards, not in personal enrichment. We need to do that. We need to do things like that. What about recycling to make products that we use? Yeah, we've spoken about that. Damien Lamy, you're, you're kind of on the show late. Watch it at the start. The Progressive Empowerment Party have strong recycling policies for single-use plastics and, and tires to repurpose them into um, construction and, and road building and other situations like that. 
Yeah, sorry about that one. The sinuses with its harrowers. We have policy documents. We have the 21 policies. It's a snapshot of a preview of our policies. Our manifesto is called Reboot the Republic. Our policy, our, our main policy plan is to undo and redo back to the <coughs> Kenroy. Stop the capital letters now. It looks like you're shouting. Keep in mind, Philip, that for you to be successful, you will have to work hand in hand in the same lazy, disrespectful, and but no, no, I won't. No, I won't. We have plans for a lot of the public servants that you're talking about, a meritocracy. Those who corrupt, lazy, self-serving will be removed from office. We have no interest in working with them. There are a lot of people in this country looking for good jobs and we will replace them. There are no positions in the public service that I could think of that is so untrainable that you can't replace people in. And if you can't find them locally, we'll find them internationally in the Commonwealth. But we will purge the public service of all the corrupt and the lazy and the unproductive. We will set world market standards for our performance in everything and those who cannot live up to it will be terminated. Yeah? So no, don't tell yourself that you have to work with this one and that one. When you take responsibility for a company, when you take responsibility for a country of 100 days, and in that 100 days, you have to engage in a massive HR process to find out all those who have been performing and all those who have been bullshitting, and the bullshitters, first ones out the door. Yeah, you done. You trapped me into an hour and a half of questions. But I think that it was a good session tonight. Um, there's a lot like what we do every Saturday. We have an open mic and we invite the public to come in and kick the tires and look around at what we do and ask questions. But before I go tonight, um, we, we need help. Huh? Don't think, and, and, and my friend with the capital letters who asked me those questions, this is not an easy thing to do. And we need your help, we need your support, we need your guidance, but we need your financial assistance also. Every single dollar counts. We pay for our radio time, we pay for our TV time. They don't give us a free pass, but you know what? We will endure until the end. I, I think at night could run till day catch it, you know? Long rope for Maga Goat kind of thing now. They have a saying, and I want the media operatives and the media owners to hear me. Be careful that the toes you're stepping on today not connected to the ass you have to kiss tomorrow. Just be careful, because you don't know. Stranger things have happened. I lived in a world that said a black man could never be president of the United States. Barack Obama had two terms. I lived in that world, and he was a two-year serving senator in Chicago. When they plucked him, people said that's a joke. Be very careful that the toes you're stepping on today not connected to the ass you have to kiss them or you'll deal with us, you know. You will deal with us. You could either deal with us from a position of understanding and respect, or you could deal with us from a position of denigration and shame. You set in the tone. We here. When Nicholas Sabga called me before our show was aired on CNC3, I told him, if the media wants to deal fair with the Progressive Empowerment Party, the Progressive Empowerment Party will cease all hostilities. If you come halfway with an open hand to me, I will meet you more than halfway. We are yet to get that, and we struggle on. The Progressive Empowerment Party, two years and a couple months, two years and a couple months, no money, no deep pocket finances, under an unethical, unconstitutional media blackout, we continue to grow. On the 23rd of March, we open our fourth office. We are at 19 Stanmore Avenue. We are at 137 Manahambri Road. We are opening on 10th Avenue in Maritara, and We have a New York office. Six weeks, we'll open the fifth office in Tampuna Road, Arima. Then we're opening in Central and Tobago. We are still looking for those offices and negotiating. If you have any facilities or space that you would like to make available to the Progressive Empowerment Party in Central and in Tobago, and you would like to talk to me, I would love to talk to you because we need those spaces and we want to open those offices. We have divided you know, into five hubs, North, East, Central, South, Tobago, and those hubs make it easier for us to control 
our mobilization, Shari Wilson and Michelle Davis. Shari Wilson is the party organizer. Michelle Davis is her head mobilization coordinator and we are building out the hubs. Michelle opened the South um, Hub and we are working right now to open the North Hub. If you would like to assist in any way with office space, we would love it. If you could help us with anything, we're building our own TV studio right now. Satish Ramsaran is handling that. So if you would like to help with our TV studios, you bring any technical, financial, any kind of um, skills to that, and you want to assist, get in touch with Satish Ramsaran. Our radio show is two days a week now, Monday and Wednesday, nine to noon. We are going to be expanding it to four days a week, Monday to Thursday. But there's a cost to that and we need your help so if you could assist us please we would be very very happy on the 30th of march we have our second version of the pep market now the pep market is a fundraiser but it's an opportunity to put pep work people who are out of work to give them an opportunity to earn some some money um using whatever they're capable of food whatever kind of buy and sell whatever in that market we have a second hand bazaar if you have generally used items that you would like to sell to turn into cash, come and rent a table, it's $200. We have a big green space for all of our pet farmers to actually get involved in selling their produce. Come and be a part of that as well if you're a pet farmer. And it's not just for pet people, anybody could take part in it. If you would like more information on anything, if you would like any, if you would like more information on anything that we talk about, 3474PEP is our hotline. You'll have all our numbers. Mine is 682-2110. Um, Tony's is 688-4012. I think Felicia's is 769-4590. But everybody free to publish their numbers. Um, Peptrendbego, gmail.com. Our website is pepttt.com. Um, our app, the PEP app, PEP, APP is available on any of the app stores. Free to download. And what am I forgetting? Nothing that I can think of this Saturday at noon if you would like to join us. We're at 19 Stanmore Avenue. Good night, Sterling Leha, who was on the radio with us today, our caretaker for Diego Martin Central. We are at 19 Stanmore Avenue this Saturday at noon, public meeting. It is open. The doors are open to everybody. Feel free to drop by. Come and meet your pep family and see if this is something that you want to know more about. Yeah? So, I guess until tomorrow evening, hope you all have a great, what's tomorrow, Tuesday, a great Tuesday. Stay safe, General Tobago.